But what about second breakfast? Only shooting stars break the This video and my channel are sponsored by Whatnot. What's Whatnot? It's the website you see behind me. Whatnot is a marketplace for cool collectors and collectibles. If you're a collector, you can actually do a stream where you're selling your collectibles. You can do these rapid five minute auctions. You can show off the product live. You can do box breaks and pack opening while the people in your chat purchase those cards. And if you're somebody who likes cool collectibles, especially Magic the Gathering cards, it could be really fun. I actually did a stream recently on Whatnot where I actually made my collectibles. I drew hand-drawn tokens, which were, um, we'll say, of uh, not very great artistic integrity, but they were really, really fun. And I loved getting to do token requests and send those out to the people who were watching the stream. So again, that's whatnot.com. If you sign up with the link in the description of my video, you'll also get $15 off your first purchase and you'll be supporting my channel. So again, whatnot.com. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing Samwise Gamgee, the food making hobbit who loves it when his friends join him for second breakfast. Whenever you have a creature, a non-token creature, enter the battlefield, Sam gets you a food and he can sacrifice three foods to bring back a historic permanent. Now, historic isn't something we've actually seen for a while, so let me re-detail what it is. Historic, most people will think of as legendary, as legendary creatures, artifacts, enchantments. But it's also artifacts and sagas. So what can you build around for Sam? You can build around loads of legends. You can build around a couple sagas. You can build tokens and artifacts, or you can just make yourself green and white and good. We've got a little bit of everything in this deck because I love Selesnia. That's the color combination we have here of green and white. So I put in a lot of my favorite cards that I think would work well with Sam. Because we have this cool recursion, I'm also playing some other secondary recursion like Tishar to help bring things back. But we also have some things that loop with Sam, like Elspeth Conquers Death. This is a saga, so it's legendary, or sorry, not legendary, it's historic, but it can bring back the Sam who brings back the saga, who brings back the Sam who brings back the saga. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in this deck. And we're making a lot of food! You might notice that there's a lot of cards in here, especially these hobbits here, that make extra food. Yeah, I added in a couple extra halflings because I like hobbits. I think they're cute. And because we're playing with our food, we also have cards like Trail of Crumbs. Um, if or having a food enter the battlefield. Food is artifact. Artifact triggers Yoshin Dissident, and it also triggers, where are you? Sarah Steelseeker, who lets us either get a land or put something into our graveyard, depending on what's on top of our deck. Putting things in a graveyard is good for the Sam, and if it's good for the Sam, it's good for us. Um, this deck is really fun. I've had fun playing it so far, and I think you're going to enjoy it in this video. So let's go ahead and make some food. Nethroi, Apex of Death. Just like us, they're trying to bring things back from the graveyard. But the way they do it is usually with a little bit more self-mill. When you mutate with Nethroi, you get to bring back 10 power worth of creatures from your graveyard, which is oftentimes things that don't actually have 10 total power because there's some things that have less power in the graveyard than they do on the battlefield. It's really neat and we're going to see what they end up playing with. Because they're in black and white, they also have access to a lot of good removal, and green gives them ramp and fixing too. So getting to the seven mana for that mutate isn't as hard as you might think. All right, so we have Sam. He's a lonely man, so we're going to bring out his wife. Rosie Cotton of South Lane. I am a little afraid that they're going to kill Sam here. Good, they didn't. All right, so Rosie and Sam, as you might imagine, go really, really well together. Um... Rosie makes a food when she enters the battlefield. Sam makes a food when he sees Rosie. Oh, they're cooking together. Let them cook. Because every time we get a food, we also get a plus one, plus one counter onto a creature that's not Rosie. Gotta love it, right? I love my adorable hobbit couple. Oh, that's an early dark ritual. What are you doing with all that manner? Tend to shoot Dryad. Okay, that's gonna be uh, spitting out some big stuff. I only have four mana here. Here's Addison's Pilgrim. More food, more fun. Yeah, just keep making Sam bigger. I'll swing in with my 5-5 five, five Samwise. <laughs> and I'm actually going to use Norn's Disassembly 
to sacrifice one of these food. See what I get here. I could have waited, seen if they had some removal, uh, and then like I can sacrifice one of these too. But I love the idea of just like using the food. Okay, Plague Crafter. Um, I can get rid of one of these and bring it back off Sam. So I think I will sacrifice Rosie, rip to the Rosie, because I really want to get rid of Tender Shoot Dryad, and that requires me to have five mana. There we go. No more tender shoots. And since they had used that dark ritual, they don't have as much mana as it seems. They only have three lands right now and none of it is white. Sadly, in the Kitrog monster, my lands and creatures are going to be entering the battlefield tapped. I do have some basic lands, but everything else sideways. Uh, they're getting taxed. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put Thalia and the Gitrog monster beneath Rasad. Um, it costs five to specialize, but we might end up specializing. Do I want to get loose with the goose? Yeah, I'll get loose with the goose. I want Rosie to come back off Elspeth Conquer's death. And this way I'm holding open the mana for Norna's disassembly. By the way, this is instant speed. I can bring back Rosie just like whenever I want. A fateful absence? Okay, um, would I rather have a clue or just get a random legend? Random legend. <laughs> I could have both. It's my turn. Um, I am actually going to start by just putting Rasad back in hand. One, two, three. We bring back our Rosie. Things are getting rosy. We're going to be playing Rasad, perhaps even Eleanor Gardner, removing these from the battlefield, swinging in with our gigantic Sam. Yeah, Sam and Rosie. Truly a match made in heaven. At end of turn, our opponent will be making zombies. As long as they don't have a decayed zombie already. This hand is missing my second color. This hand has both colors. Keep it. Go for that fabled passage, crack it open, get some white mana. Where are you, white mana? There you are. Planes. Yeah, our opponent's playing Jadar. Probably going to be zombies and sacrifice. All sorts of good cards that go well with Jadar. Nice. Witch's Oven. Witch's Oven lets them double up on abilities with their zombies because they can attack, deal the damage, and then in response to the sacrifice trigger, sacrifice it to the Witch's Oven. It's sweet. It's really good. Do I want to go for just doubled foods from Pippin? Or do I want Arwen to help protect my board? Having an indestructible blocker does sound pretty good. But having more food sounds even more good. I'm hungry. And thirsty. Uh, nothing like the old... Uh, what is it? 1 p.m. on a Monday wine spritzer? Yeah, that's is, this is responsible gaming here. Chat, game responsibly. Do um, you want to wanna sacrifice? Hey, Sandor! You good over there? Yuji? Hello? Okay, sweet. It's my go. Wait, nope. Never mind. They're holding priority again. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna like check my email one sec. Oh, officially magic licensed art prints. I like art prints. Attack in. Neat. Okay, what are we doing? We're waiting for Jadar to take his turn. A uh, Peregrine Took or Pippin, who can block a zombie. Gosh, this is Jadar, this Jadar alt art is so gruesome. What's with his tongue? 
He's a human. Why is his tongue like that? Why is he dripping spit into the zombie's mouth? That's gross. Blood artist. Nice. When that dies, they will be getting life. They could just sacrifice it, though. Um, they used a dark ritual, so to have some extra mana to spare. Going for cut down on sand. Really? Really? Right in front of Pippin? You're just gonna kill him? Gross. Yuck. Nasty. Oracle of Moldaya. Let me get more lands. That's a land, thank you. Oh, another land. Would you look at that? Uh, I'm not attacking in. I'm gonna leave this back as a blocker because it can very cleanly block a 2 2 zombie. No, my tongue is firmly in my mouth. Um, I don't have it just like bleh, out all the time. And it's not even like, there's a difference between like he's sticking out his tongue and his tongue is like way past his beard. Ooh, Yoggle's doing the sacrifice shenanigans. Gonna kill my Oracle Moldaya, huh? Not gonna do it before I can play these lands? Okay. Works for me. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go to increase the toughness of these creatures. Make it a little harder for them to kill it off Yogma. Oh, to play Sam. Absolutely to play Sam. Nice. By the way, this has protection from humans. Um, we probably have some humans somewhere in our library. I got a Frexian Tower to turn that zombie into even more mana. Oh, they're hitting the Oracle again. Drawing a card, turning it into a wee little 1-1. One, one. Thank you, Flowering of the White Tree. I really appreciate that Ward 1, making this Yawgmoth ability a little slower. R.I.P. Jadar, but Jadar will return. I lose a life off Blood Artist. And the Eldest Reborn are gonna make me sacrifice! Ah, uh, Rippin' Pippin. It's okay, I can bring him back. Gosh, I'm a big fan of Rippin' Pippin, though. Yeah, that's fun. Here we go, Radagast the Brown. Let's see if we hit a creature on top of our deck. Toski and Mondrak. So Toski, normally fantastic choice. Not so good against Yawgmoth. Even with that ward, that's still kind of risky play. Uh, we could go for Pippin, but we can double our tokens with this with Mondrak, Glory Dominus. We're gonna get double the tokens. And swinging with Gamgees. All right, Sam, hit him. Four entire damage. Radagast the Brown, I appreciate you finding those creatures for me. We'll have to discard here, and I will be discarding Arwen, Mortal Queen. Dust Queen. But, like, no queen. She's dead. Uh, I want to make sure I have my food ability up, so when they target a creature in my graveyard, I can bring it back to make us both sacrifice. Uh, goodbye Radagast, I guess. Yeah, right now, like, Plague Crafter is the card they bring back from their graveyard, but I have much better targets, I think, in mine. The only thing I can't hit right now is my uh, Oracle of Moldiah, which they may choose to bring. Nice, Yehenny. And so get around that, I am going to get the Oracle of Moldaya. We get ourselves some extra food. Play the Oracle. 
we get ourselves two more tokens. There is not a land on top of my library. And I could either play Norn's Disassembly or hold open food and sacrificing food. I'm going to attack with Mondrak. Actually... Yeah, I'm going to attack with Mondrak. We can make Mondrak indestructible by sacrificing food. Lucky me. They draw. They pass the main. And what do you target? You sure you want to be targeting my graveyard? It's Plague Crafter! I'm going to use my ability here to grab Radagast the Brown. Sacrificing one, two, three of these. And to do it again. Grabbing Arwen Peregrine, Arwen Pippin, Arwen Pippin, Arwen Pippin. I just love the idea of having so many tokens I can't even handle it. Wait a minute. I get all three. Or I could just use Tishar for the last one. That works. Oh no. We can let Sam die. Rippin'. Rippin' peace. Samwise Gamgee. GM's Lost Bear, thank you so much for the 35 month resub! Hey, Jadar. This one's gonna blow your mind. Check this out. Bam, I can actually just eat food. I know, nuts, right? Hey. That's not a land. I'm gonna go for Tishar. What if I should have gone for Radagast? Just to move the cards off the top of my deck. That could have been fun. But I really want that Stare and Steel, Steel Seeker as well. Uh, cards like Chatterfang can't be put into a deck. Uh, that has a green and white color identity because Chatterfang is green and black. It's a black ability. As much fun as Chatterfang would be in a tokens build, doesn't quite work. They're gonna sacrifice their zombie. That's gonna drain me for life. And they're gonna get to kill one of my other creatures. So it looks like they're hitting Tishar. They have to pay one. Do you pay the one? They do pay the one. I guess I could have held open the uh, indestructible rather than playing disassembly. But at least the Oracle of Moldai is still alive, surprisingly. Like, I didn't actually expect that. Things are going to happen. We're going to get a lot of triggers. Ella Schnorn, straight in the trash. The Shire, into my hand. A forest. Cool, I'll take a forest. Like, the Shire? Looking at how much life they have. And I'm going to just chill. Sit here. And wait. Probably gonna grab this Elish Norn next turn. Oh, it's Wrinkle! He can fly right over my board, dealing damage to my face. Making us both sacrifice. We're just each sacrificing a creature? Okay, that's fine with me. Um, I feel like I'm making kind of too many food. And I don't feel pressured to draw cards yet.
But I have a flyer I can bring back. If I so desire. Tishar, one, two, three. Oh, it's inspiring statuary. We found it. This food's about to get so much better. Oh no, that's staying on top. Actually, wait, I can technically bring it back from the graveyard. Tishar does that too. Elf, get out of here. Oh, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be so fun. I'm like, I'm getting a little, uh, getting a little jittery with how silly this is about to get. Tipping back on the battlefield. Just a couple of food. Just a few. Hey, Nissa. I'll keep you on top. Get rid of that witch's oven. Things are... You know what? You, you want me to put things in a graveyard? I'll put things in a graveyard. Yeah, sure. That gets me more lands. Oh, Sam! Sam, get in the trash. Other Sam. One, two, three for the inspiring statuary. Do I have anything that costs less than... Yeah, I do! Inspiring statuary. Our opponent gave us a sleepy hedron, and they're not here for me going off. We're going to play two extra lands, or uh, an extra land, get that landfall trigger, keep casting spells. We're going to be able to tap our food in order to cast our spells. Anything that's not an artifact now has improvised. This was going to be the biggest turn of the game. GG Jadar. Atraxa Praetor's voice. This is the proliferating angel who makes your things bigger and goes great with planeswalkers. Atraxa Praetor's voice. Four mana. Four, four. Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink, just like the bigger version. It's still quite scary either way. I'm gonna go for Temple of Plentil, see if I can find a land that is a land. I can play Sam next turn. Hey, Atraxa. Hey, how you doing? I have a bit more green mana than I would like. Still fine. Here comes Sam. We have our Fabled Passage, Castle Garenbrig, and a dead Sam. Great. Ripping peppies, Sam. We have a short and sad life. At least you were surrounded by your children. Norn's Disassembly lets me sacrifice food and other historic permanents in order to get a historic card. And here comes the Tangled Florahedron. It's a 1-1. One, one. It taps for mana. It's cool because it's also a land on the backside. Are you going to kill it? Are you going to kill my little guy? I bet that this is going to be a Super Friends version of Atraxa. It's probably got a whole bunch of board wipes, counter spells, and teferis in it. Just based on how this game has started. Hi there, Atraxa. Atraxa's gonna do a lot of work just on her own by being big and scary. I'm gonna grab another source of white mana. We can play Esper Sentinel. We can play uh, Eleanor Gardner. Neither of these are gonna be doing all that much. The reason I'm going to play Esper Sentinel is because I think they're playing a lot of non-creature spells. And if they go to kill my Esper Sentinel, I can actually sacrifice it to disassembly to bring it back. Or well, not bring it back, but get value out of it. You got Vigilance, swing on in. Oh, do you, do you think I have a Ganjo? I don't have a Ganjo. Coward. But you have a counter spell. Here's something that can't be countered. Thrun Breaker of Silence. Can't be can't be countered. Indestructible on my turn. Can't target it. He's a good boy. That's what he is. That's right, Thrun. We love and respect you. He's the last troll. 
Hi, Kaya. Do you pay the one? They do not pay the one. So they can't exile Thrun. They could exile the Esper Sentinel or Norn's Disassembly, though. They could also put a counter onto a Traxa. It is a Ghost Swarm counter, which is actually completely meaningless beyond it being reminder text. And then they swing in. Cool. They proliferate. Kaya gets closer to ult. She'd be able to ult next turn, so we will have to attack her. Probably with everything. Use some of my mana for the greatest tenge you've ever seen. And here's Sam! Hi, Sam! I'm actually going to attack with both of these at Kaya. Giving them the chance to kill the Esper Sentinel because I'd like to get more damage onto Kaya. They actually chose to block Thrun. Because Thrun is indestructible, the Death Touch doesn't kill him. We get two damage through on Kaya. They get a Spirit. And they actually chose to put a Traxa back into Command Zone instead of back in into Hand. So they'll still have to pay their Commander Tax. It it's hard to click right. You have to say, yes, I want it to go to the Graveyard. And then, yes, I want it to go to Hand. All right. Now they've got a Board Wipe. Do you pay the one? That's fair. Okay, they paid the one. Kaya's probably going to get rid of my Great Henge. Great though it was, it's kind of good. Oh, never mind. They're just plusing. They really do want her to ult. Um, that's... I mean, that's a good move. It's a really strong card. Uh, I'm going to use Castle Garenbrig here to generate a little bit of extra mana. Here comes Sam. Go for Mondrak. Get double the food, since we're doubling our tokens. If they have a proliferate, they'll be able to use Kaya here. Nope. They're just getting rid of my Great Henge. It sure was great while it lasted. And then exiling both my creatures with a Sunfall. Great. Yeah, I don't really care for your deck. Mother of Machines and Eleanor Gardner. Gonna get double the food. Yeah, if you play a creature, look, I can fight it with my dog. Bark, bark. I can actually fight two things with dogs. This can become a 2 2 creature. They plussed with no creatures out in play. Why? Do you have another board wipe? Playing a Traxa, protecting her? I get that. Just plussing into an empty board. What you doing? You gonna farewell? No. Casualties of war. Once I saw them hover over my land, I had a sneaking suspicion! Perfect time to bring out the other Elish Norn so we can finally get rid of this ding dang Kaya. We have uh, the ability to bring back these three cards since they're all historic. Hi, Vorinclex. Vorinclex is going to double their counters. And uh, that's great with the Traxa. Since they're proliferating, they're killing my big Elish Norn. I'm going to get a land. I don't really want to eat the food. I'd rather save it for Sam. And unfortunately, I don't get plus one, plus one counters with this Wicked Wolf, so long as this is out. Sweet Gandalf. Gandalf's great. I'm just going to go 1z, 2z, 3z. Get the big Elish Norn back, since clearly they don't like it. Swinging for two. Boop. I'm mostly doing this so I can ramp. Ramp good. Ramp strong! Hey, eight mana two twos are still worth my respect. Here's a tracks it! End of turn, they'll be able to proliferate this, turning it from a two two into a four four. Wait, they're swinging in with it now? I'll take the little victories. There's nothing for them to proliferate now. I'll take it. 
certainly could, could be better, could be worse. Eleanor Gardner and a trail of crumbs. I guess I can offer them a trade. Hey, you want to trade? Cool. 10 drop 2-2. Two, two. You love 10 mana 2-2 two, two permanents that do nothing when they enter the battlefield. Ooh, the Cornucopia. This is proliferatable, and they already have it uh, as six. But they need something to spend that mana on. Let's see, we got Amaria's Call, we got Samwise, we got Gandalf. I'm just gonna eat this food. Okay, the one. Tireless Provisioner. Make more food. Wicked Wolf. I might not get a plus one plus one counter, but it still gets to be indestructible. I get to use the Trail of Crumbs again. We feast. And since I have all the mana in the world, I'm not going to bother swinging into this because they would just play it again. We're going to get a basic land. Eeny, meeny, miny. This one, because it's closest to where my mouse was. Since we've got a land, we get another treasure. Looking good. I don't need the food right here. I'll get more food through other means. Hi, Liliana. Are you going to make me sacrifice two of my permanents? Yep. They are. Oh, never mind. They actually plussed to make a zombie to draw a card. And since they have 8, 9, 10, 11 mana, pretty much anything they draw, they'll be able to cast. Oh, like other Liliana. I'm sorry, Professor Onyx. They're, um, like, legally distinct. They didn't minus. Minusing would have killed my Wicked Wolf or Tireless Provisioner. And they're doing a spark double to Liliana's. To Atraxa's? Two Professor Onyxes. And they plus again. They're trying to find card advantage to use with this Hornocopia. And by the way, with these guys coming out, I am so glad I chose to kill Vorinclex over Attracts because these would have been able to ult right away. Uh, just kind of terrifying. Um, I'm going to cast Emeria's Call to give all of these indestructible until end of turn. And I'm going to be swinging... Um, Tweet you and tweet you. They draw a card. I'm going to play this Elven Course. It's going to let me play lands off the top of my deck. I don't have one. Delighted Halfling. She's not indestructible because I played her after the Emeria's Call, but everybody else is. It would have to be an Exiling Board Wipe, of which they've already cast one. So if they have a Farewell, that really stinks. But if they don't, they have tons and tons of mana. They have some card advantage. We'll see what they do. Staff of Completion. That lets them proliferate. Or draw cards. Cool zombie. It's dead. They draw a card. Would you like to pay five to untap it? You have plenty of mana. Tapping for black. Untapping the Staff of Completion. 
tapping it again. They've refilled their hand at the cost of blood. They still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. Vraska. Vraska can turn my creatures into artifacts. Or just draw cards and proliferate. One, two, three, four, five mana now left. Notably, that old wreckage mana is up. Oh, actually, that's probably just going to be game. They did a time warp. They can ult. And I lose the game. Let's see if they see it. All you gotta do is minus. I have exactly one card in hand and ten light. Good game. We're gonna drop our Gandalf the White. And we go to negative eight life. Losing the game! GG Atraxa and your super duper friends. Itali Primal Conqueror! The dinosaur with the Crimosaur. Hello there, Itali. Are you here to steal the top spell of my library when you enter the battlefield and then turn into the White Steel Colossus? You sure are. I really don't like these Ixalan alt arts. The ones with the coins on them. I am not a fan, but I am a fan of Sam. Hi there, Samwise Gamgee, the true hero of Lord of the Rings. Sam's chilling on the battlefield, ready to cook up a food, a little bit of feast. With my Serenth Steelseeker and Trail of Crumbs, we have some synergy cards here. Neverwinter Dryad, they can sacrifice to ramp, getting a forest out of their deck. Paradise Druid, more ramp. Ooh. I'm going to play the Arcane Signet and the Serenth Steel Seeker. When the Serenth Steel Seeker enters the battlefield, we get the food. And we can now choose if we want to keep this on top or put it into the graveyard. Now, this is a legend, so I can bring it back, but it's also super good and I could just kind of want to play it next turn. So I keep it. Just, yeah, Serenth Steel Seeker, are you ready to get double the food, double the triggers, double the fun? I think so. I'm an artifacts deck in Selesnia. Fable the Mirror Breaker, sweet. That's going to get them the little rampant goblin. I'm gonna let them discard and draw too. And then turn into a little clone beast. Elishnorn gives me two food, two food. Each get two triggers out the Seren Seal Seeker. Uh, it's a land, I'll take it. I would love a land. And it's a Relic of Legends. I'll throw that in the trash. What else do we got? We got Peregrine Took. Throw them in the trash. I can bring them back. Any lands? Lands! Love a good land. They discarded a Prowling Serpapard. I don't have counter spells, so that's very fair. And a sheltered thicket, which is a land that enters the battlefield tap. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, and a potential seventh mana. But Elishnorn stops their commander from getting the thing. So I feel like they're going to have to set up, kill Elishnorn, and then do it. They could also, by the way, just go for the transform side of Itali to win the game. It's also a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. It's great. But you don't get an ETB. Nice. For me, not for you. It's very good for me. Um, Fable the Mirror Breaker. I could exile that before it transforms. I want my sweet little food boy back. One, two, three. We're going to sacrifice those. I could have played Trail of Crumbs first if I wanted to use up some of those triggers to get some more food. We're going to get some more food. And whenever we get food, we get more food. Whenever we get more food, we get more food. We get more Saren Steel Seekers. Reveal it. Put it in my hand. Reveal it. Put it in my hand. Reveal it. Put it into my hand. And that's an Amarius Call, which is kind of like a land. Throw it in the trash. I don't need that. And then we do it again. Reveal it. Put it into my hand. I demand more. Ooh, Mondrak. Put that away. I don't need Mondrak. Reveal it. Sure. More lands, more fun. Wandering Emperor. I'll actually keep that on top. I like Wandering Emperor. It's a good card. I'm going to use this Skyclave Apparition. No, a bunch of stuff's about to happen hit Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Paradise Druid. We get more food, we get more triggers. 
Yeah, you know what? Fine. Everybody goes into the graveyard. I don't even care. Huff, wait. No. I know what I want on top. It's you. It's Crater Hoof Behemoth. Because a doubled Crater Hoof Behemoth entered the battlefield off Elish Norn? Sounds really good. I can technically draw that right now, but um, I don't really want to. I have too many cards in hand. I have so much food. Mmm, food. Sam and Pippin out here cooking up a storm! I'll just take seven. They don't have enough mana to transform. Kogla and Yadaro, though, doesn't get it to enter the battlefield. We're going to draw a card. Sure, do it again. I love having too many cards in hand. It's a joy. Playing Overgrown Farmland. We're still one short of that hoof. If only I had an inspiring statuary. If only. I could try and find one off Norn's Disassembly. Revive the Shire, Trail of Croms. Norn's Disassembly. I'm gonna sacrifice a food to get a historic card out of my library. Radagast. Sorry, not Radagast. Rasad. We have Radagast in hand. Um, yeah, Rasad's cool. Let's me exile something. Uh, I will exile Kogla and Yadaro. And Atali. Oh god, this is gonna happen again. Reveal it. Never mind. Okay. They're leaving. Too many triggers. It that obeys is playing a Lagomos Hand of Hatred. It makes a 2 1 that can attack every turn, but then gets sacrificed. And I'm all again so I have a bit more mana. This looks a lot better. Um, I have Takaja's Welcome. I have Ms. Gardner. Alright, I'll throw this down. Turn one, and we can shock in our Temple Garden to get down Sam on turn two. Ooh, but the Priest might be making me sacrifice my commander if I do that. Still risk it for the biscuits. Here comes Samwise Gamgee. And Sam is dead. His quest for the ring complete. He now retires in my graveyard. I still feel that playing a creature here won't do that well for me, so I'm going to throw down Takash's Welcome. Whenever I have a creature with a mana value 3 or less enter the battlefield for the first time each turn, I get to draw a card. Now that works for Sam, it works for tokens, but it doesn't work for Oracle Moldaya or Eleanor Gardner. Or Radagast. Or Mondrak. Unlucky witness. And a deadly dispute. Wow, that guy really is unlucky. Died the turn he entered the battlefield. Let's see, they have a Riveteer's Provocateur. They could play that this turn. A Lava Coil, which has no target. So yep, they're going for the Provocateur. Bam! Oh, they're blitzing it! They're giving something in their hand blitz. I have to discard. I'll put a legend into my graveyard since we can bring those back off Sam. I'll go for... Eleanor. Boop, boop. Right now, all of these can't be played since this comes in tapped. That'll help. Uh, let's go for Oracle. See what we got. Nothing. Okay, Brad, playing the Shire. They know now what's on top of my library. It is an Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Oh no, Liliana! They got the face breaker. They're gonna get a treasure when the Priest of Forgotten Gods hits my face. They can also sacrifice a treasure to get a impulse draw off the top of their deck. They have to play the card until end of turn, though. Or, um, goes away. 
Let's see, Radagast or Samwise? Let's go for that guaranteed card draw. Love that for me. So I now have Patriarch's Humiliation here, and I may wish to humiliate something like the Facebreaker or Priest. Here comes the Lagamos! Lagamos enters the battlefield, and before they go to combat, I am going to silence him with Patriarch's Humiliation so he does not make a 2-1 Elemental. They're going to sacrifice in response to kill Sam. R.I.P. Sam, you lived a short, unfulfilling life! They get to draw a card. They get two more mana. Ooh. Castle Locked Wayne. I could pay five life to draw a card. I mean, I've done that. Nope, instead, Midnight Reaper. Gonna give them card draw life loss off their creatures dying. And they're also giving them plus two, plus oh. Make them huge! Make them dead. Elish Norn going to kill those two. They're gonna draw extra cards. One from the Transmogron's Crown and two from the Midnight Reaper. Their hand is full, but Elish Norn is prepared to cause problems. Thanks, Elish Norn. She's ignoring me. That's okay. She's just so pretty. Just look at her. Covered in bone and whatnot. Murderous Rider coming into play. Arcane Signet. Sam returns. The world's most expensive Samwise Gamgee. Will he die before he has a chance to make any food? I mean, maybe. <laughs> it's definitely a possibility. I have to remember, what does Lazel do on green? I'm very used to her white and black. Other creature cards in your hand get plus one, plus one. Oh, that's not very good. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep it to white. Sweet, if this charger dies, they'll be doing three damage to any target. Oh, cool! They gave Woe Strider Blitz! They could sacrifice that Fireblaze Charger to deal three damage to any target and draw a card. But first, they have Diabolic Intent. Going to play Mondrak for more food. We get double the food off this ability. And I could play the Iganjo. I could play Radagast. I kind of like holding open food, though. Let's see. What do I want to do? Lena! Yeah, yeah, month, month, double, double, tropical punch. I never claimed it made sense. Thank you so much, Lena Mothbeard, for the 26 month resub. It's much appreciated. Thank you. I'm going to play this risky. Not going to hold up the ability to eat the food. I am going to hold up the ability to sacrifice the food. Probably going to be uh, bringing back Elish Norn from our graveyard, too. We're going to block and block. You choose to redirect the damage onto Mondrak. Oh, onto Sam. All right, in response, I'm going to grab Elish Norn. One, two, three. What a delicious snack. Goodbye, Sam. Sam costs eight mana. <laughs> what a funny little guy. Hey, Logamos, you want to come make zero zeros that die? Oh, at least you were dying. Liliana into play. Would you care to sacrifice two creatures? Looks like they're actually trying to maximize their card draw. So, they played another creature. Put the crown on the goat. So they get to draw two cards. Smart! Battle get recovery could bring one of these back. 
How much of a rush do I think I'm in? Not enough of a rush. Let's go for Radagast the Brown. Oh, do I have any creatures? A Toski. That's a cool squirrel, isn't it? It is a cool squirrel. Thank you for acknowledging it. An Esper Sentinel, Thrun, or Seren Steelseeker. I'm just going to go wide and hope for no meat hook massacres. Draw off to Kesha's welcome. Get a Nissa. Great. Looking good. Thank you, Radagast. Radagast deck win. Dark ritual. Do you pay the one? They did not pay the one. What are you doing with six mana? What are you doing with six mana? They could escape the Woe Strider. Oh, I see them highlighting their graveyard. I think they're escaping. Academy's Awakening. It's even bigger than that. They're going to get three creatures out of our graveyard. A three drop, a two drop, a one drop. Lagamos makes this little guy. It swings in. We block. Because their creature died. And it would be sacrificed anyway. So they would get be, be getting that draw. That's going to happen. Okay, so. They're going to draw a bunch of cards off, the des off of this. And when I say a bunch, I mean a frankly kind of obscene number of cards. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to play Nissa first. Things happen. Give me the monkey. Put some white mana. Elish Norn. A lot of things are happening here. Hey, anybody who's not a Phyrexian, Praetor, Elf, Scout, Human, Soldier, Squirrel, or Avatar, or Wizard in the top cards of my library. My deck is about half creatures, by the way. Yeah, deal negative one damage. Their hand gets overfilled. They take some damage off the Midnight Reaper. Halfling, Wolf, and Peregrine Took. I'll take that Wicked Wolf. And I'm going to be swinging Radagast at base. Toski and Lilian. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure Lilian is dead. She's scary, and I don't want to think about her. Drawing cards is great, but killing Lilian is greater. Great. Oh, sure. Norn is disassembly. Put that on the battlefield. Eight mana, no problem. I got eight mana. They know about my Kogla and my wolf since I got those off Radagast. Thank you, Elish Norn. We love you, Elish Norn. Sanguine Brushstroke is going to get them a Blood Artist, which means whenever any creature dies, I'll be losing a life. All they have to do here is wipe the board. It would have to somehow kill Toski as part of that. Oh, but it dies immediately on entering the battlefield. Right, because it's a negative one toughness creature with our Elish Norn out. Thank you, Elish Norn. We love you, Elish Norn. Morbid Opportunist. A negative 1-1 one, one who's going to draw them a card when a creature dies. And a creature is going to die because Lagamos at start of combat is going to make a little dude. The little dude dies immediately. And they have 11 cards in hand. They have five or more creatures died this turn. I don't think so. They died on my turn. Oh, <gasps> let my creatures tap for mana? Wait, I want to cast a cool spell. Okay, it's fine. We don't have to do that. Good game, Lagamos. Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. Hey there, Jetmir. Jetmir is like a crater hoof behemoth in the command zone. Depending on a number of creatures you have, your board gets bigger and gets more abilities. Starting with Vigilance, then getting Trample, and then getting Double Strike. And yes, they do all add up. Jetmir is so dang good and really rewards you for playing tons of small creatures and protecting your board. Uh, looks like they went for a triple mulligan there. Um, 
They get two for free, but they did put one back at the end, which means that they really wanted something good. Uh, I want to say thank you, though, to my opponent for not just, like, conceding after having to do a double mulligan. A lot of people do that because you don't lose anything by giving up. Ooh, it looks like we're going to be seeing some tokens. That's an intangible virtue. Uh, I could certainly go for Knight of Autumn to destroy that here. We could play Boromir to help protect Sam. But I want to start with a Yoshin Dissident. We get a food, and we get a bigger Sam. He is a big cat. He's a cat demon, even. Skyclave Apparition, do you hit Sam or the Dissident? Yeah, hitting somebody's commander with Skyclave Apparition is really rude, because you can't leave it under there to bring back later. Knight of Autumn, destroying the intangible virtue, and then sitting here, mildly upset because you got rid of my Sam. Dang it, Nicholas. Sweet, this is going to be getting them a lot of tokens. And I need more lands! Boromir, come sit on the battlefield and be bigger than everybody else. Uh, Boromir is going to stop free spells. He's also going to protect my board by giving them indestructible and tempting me with a ring if I choose to sacrifice him. Here comes Jetmir, buffing up this battlefield. I'm willing to sacrifice my Boromir to protect these two. Because Boromir can be brought back from the graveyard. <gasps> A land! Oh, perfect! Any color, you say? Elven Chorus! Coming into play. We're going to tap those two for Malira, the Living Cure. Elven Chorus is like a combination of Cryptolith Rites and there's a lot of different passive abilities that let you play creatures off the top of your deck. Um, but this one's really funky! Oh, they're going wide again. Uh-oh. The wideness! The width! It grows! I'll prevent three damage and trade Malira. For a little guy. This is gonna flip over. And everything's gonna get plus one, plus one. But that's fine. Because most of these are not living through the turn. I ended up getting a land, which means Elish Norn's on the battlefield. And tokens are a thing of the past. GG, Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. Up again against Nethroi. Apex of Death. Nethroi bringing back those creatures from the graveyard. And having a good time doing it. Did you know that it is a cat nightmare beast? You can actually identify all of the apexes from Akoria just by their colors that each designate a creature type. Uh, so for example, for Nethroi specifically, you end up with white for cat, black for nightmare, and green for beast. The, the same thing applies, uh, blue I believe is elemental, and red is dinosaur for all the apexes. Those were the creature types for each. I'm leaving Skrull back by the way to protect Sam. He's a good man, and he needs protection. That's not a land. I need a land. Yes, Elspeth Conquers Death. Amazing card here. Not what I need. There we go. Boots. I love some boots. Lunark Veteran. They've got some life gain. Life drain going on here. We're going to throw after Paradise. They're going to gain two more life. Sweet. I would like more tokens. Mondrak coming into play and making me not one but two food. It's better than one food, it's two food. Thank you, Mondrak. Mondrak's also a big chunky 4-4, four four, which means I might be able to get that hinge out soon. If 
got five mana. As for Sentinel, going to tax my non-creature spells. Well, just draw them cards, really. Dawn of a new age! They have four creatures, so they'll be drawing four cards across the turns. Well, they would if I wasn't going to use the Night of Autumn to destroy it. I can also use that to destroy the Ornithopter of Paradise. But that can come back. This can come back. That cannot. Cut them off from their card draw. I'm actually feeling we put the protection onto Mondrak here. We'll pass the turn. Mondrak, you look good in those boots. I don't think you have feet, though. I don't think you have feet at all. Gal Greeter's also going to get them some sweet Enter the Battlefield stuff. And Lotho, when either player casts two spells in a turn, they'll lose a life and make a treasure. If they had done those in any other order, they would be getting a treasure off Lotho, but they wouldn't be getting this tap treasure off Gal Greeter's. So they chose to go for the more life efficient play, because I guess they just don't need the mana this turn. Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Not so good. Nice. Sanguine Brushstroke. Going to get them a Blood Artist. They have two Blood Artist kind of effects with Ellis Ilkor and an actual Blood Artist. Nice. When their creatures die, I'll be losing life. When my creatures die, I'll be losing life. Care to attack? You can always bring things back. They have seven mana for next turn. Hmm. Henge. I'm gonna start with Henge. Now, Elish Norn plus Mondrak means Gamgee would be making eight food, which is cool. But I don't actually think I need that right now. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna keep protecting my board. Uh, Elish Norn does not negate their big play because this is not an enter the battlefield. This is an on mutate ability. It does stop Galagreeters, Ellis Ilkor, and, um. Oh, well, they already killed him. This guy from triggering now. Ah, here we go. Luminous Phantom coming back on the backside. Do you care to attack? Blood Artist. Number two. So this is the Blood Artist that are actually playing in their deck. This is the one generated from Sanguine Brushstroke. Each of their creatures dying now drains me for three life. I'm going to eat a food since I have some to spare, gaining five life. And we're going to get some very big Enter the Battlefield effects and also stop any of theirs. Sam's going to trigger twice, the Great Henge is going to trigger twice, and Mondrak is going to double those tokens, giving me four. Four! More triggers, more plus one, plus one counters, more card draw, more food, more fun. And pass a turn. I have 11 food. Nothing to bring back, but 11 food is good. The one ring. It's just really good card draw. It doesn't do the um, protection from everything because of Elish Norn. What about eleventh breakfast? Yeah, we're um, we're kind of gorging ourselves at this point. Little too much food. They're gonna sacrifice their blood. That's gonna drain me for a life, and they're gonna discard a land. Not a creature, so it's not something they can bring back. Draw a card. Yeah, so far this is like an Abzan Sacrifice deck. I want to draw cards. Here comes the Beast Whisper. We're going to get our obscene number of triggers. Hi, Wandering Emperor. Nice to see you here. 
This comes into play untapped. We're gonna use that mana for foreign collects. You get a treasure, enjoy. Yeah, when you have a way to gain life, one ring really doesn't hurt you very much. I'm gonna grab a forest. And I'll just grab a second forest. I feel like I have enough white sources here. I don't need more, but sure, I'll thin my deck. Thanks, Warren Clex. Thanks, Henge. Thanks, Henge. We go to combat. Attackers. Redan's going to come in because she is big and vigilant. Looks like they want that drain. And they will get it. Um... It gets exiled, though, because it was a phantom. Actually, we're going to put the uh, Razor Verge Thicket into the graveyard, too. I could also put, like, my legendaries into the graveyard to bring them back off Sam. Again, 19 food! 19 food! Being asked if Valkmira prevents the damage from Blood Artist. Uh, it's not damage. It's actually life loss, which gets around Valkmira's protective ability. Um, because this is target opponent, though, I think they would have to pay one for each target. So every single time, uh, any of these that say target opponent, like Blood Artist does. By the way, the paper version actually says target player. This one says target opponent. That's the difference between an arena Blood Artist and a paper Blood Artist. It's funny that there is a difference. That's what would happen. They would have to pay one for each drain. I have spilled my bubbly wine stuff on myself, which is exactly what you're supposed to do when you're drinking bubbly wine. Happy long weekend, everybody. I'm recording this on the third, which is almost the fourth. Looks like they're sacrificing, getting some more drain off those blood artists. And a Grim Tutor. I feel like they're gonna get a board wipe. I need a Boromir. That's what I need. The reason why they made the change is so you don't have to manually target for every single trigger. Okay. My creatures die. I will move my commander to the command zone. And we're going to lose a lot of life. I don't think it's lethal, but it's certainly going to be like 18 damage. Maybe more. So with Blood Artist, before they made that change, you had to manually click every single time on your opponent because you could technically target yourself. So that's 18 from the Blood Artist, 19 from the Blood Artist, 20. Oh, right, because Blood Artist is triggering for mine, too. No, we're heckin' dead. We're extremely dead. We haven't even seen the Ilkor triggers. Good game. Whee! Shina Purifying Blade. This card is a life gain payoff card. In theory. In reality, Shana Purifying Blade is a Bant Control card. Usually people have kind of moved on from playing Shana to Tamiyo, but Shana just sits there, they draw cards. It's kind of scary and also kind of frustrating to play against. Thankfully, we have some good ramp of our own here. Not talking about Samwise, because they just taxed him with a Curse of Silence. Uh, I'm talking about Inspiring Statuary, which we can tap or tap our food to help cast our creatures. Why'd you shock that in? Counterspell? You have a counterspell? Be honest, Gummy Bob. They have a counterspell. It's Memory Lapse. This goes right back on top of my library. Guess what? I actually had more land in hand, and I will play it. Here's another... Inspiring Statuary. Oh, wait, it's actually the same exact one. They're going to seek two knowledge, getting two non-lands into hand, and then putting a card on the bottom of their library. Oh, 
Oh, gee, it's time to mill. I don't mind being milled, but they milled no historic cards. That's my Oracle and Takaja's welcome. Card draw and ramp. We have another land. Patriarch's humiliation. They killed the elf. Real fun at parties, huh? Real fun at parties, Shina. I'm destroying the curse of silence. And I'm getting loose with the goose. Hi, Amy. Hope Hi, frame well. shifty. It's going all right. Check it out. Bam, land. So I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six mana next turn, even though you can't quite see it just by looking at my cards. Frame shifty, thank you so much for the 19 month resub. And Kawhi Taras, thank you for the eight month resub. Forgot to update this. My B. You're good. You're good. I got our castle Garen Brig, and here comes Sam! Great. Um, Sam's on the battlefield. I'll swing in with my Knight of Autumn. This is a secret. Nobody tell them about my Gandalf. I want to cast this on their turn, probably in their end step. Um, oh, unless they tap out. Hey, check this out. Bam! Gandalf! You have a Pact of Negation, don't you, Gummy Bob? Gandalf the White doubles Samwise's Enter the Battlefield abilities. Next turn, we can play Elish Norn, swinging for a lot of damage, have enough food to bring back whatever historics we want from our graveyard. Something, something, something game. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to watch me record these live, come on over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I could always use some more company. I'm out here just playing my silly decks. And this was actually a deck suggestion in my chat. Somebody was like, I want to see Sam. Nobody made Sam historic brawl videos. So I said, sure, I'll build Sam. And then we all brewed it together. I let people make suggestions in the chat. It was a mistake. Uh, people kept telling me to add cards that weren't in Arena. And I had to be like, Academy Manufacturers not in Arena. Birds of Paradise is not in Arena. I know you want to put them in the deck. You can't put them in the deck. Anyway, it was still a fun time. Um, if you'd like to hang out with me, that's the best place to do it because I stream almost every single day over on Twitch. And if you ever want to make a deck suggestion, I actually recommend doing it in the comments of the YouTube video. Go check it out. There's, there's like a little comment section. You can write down, wow, Amy, I really like this video. It was super duper good. Uh, can you build Aragorn next? And I will say, I already built Aragorn. Go look at the Aragorn video. I hope that you all enjoyed this one and have a brawlful day.